we built a fully ray traced game in Unreal Engine 4, which just added DXR support officially last week. As a result of this support, we have the first look at NVIDIA RTX Shadows to show you. We have looks at graphics with all RTX features enabled, path tracing versus ray tracing comparisons, multiple reflection bounces off of objects, roughness comparisons as they relate to reflections, and deep dives on traditional graphics techniques to fake realistic visuals versus their ray traced counterparts. An untold side of the global illumination comparisons has been that there are traditional ways developers can fake GI without DXR. That's not to downplay DXR. Today's video will show you how the standard graphics methods of faking GI can get pretty close, but the method NVIDIA has been pushing and Microsoft with DXR is sometimes easier but resource expensive. I'll be joined once again by Andrew Coleman, our lead video editor and 3D artist who created all of this tech demo in Unreal Engine. We'll be talking about global illumination specifically in today's video. Before that, this video is brought to you by Be Quiet and its Straight Power 11 series power supplies. The Straight Power 11 PSUs ship from 450 watts up to 1000 watts, accommodating most of the gaming PC build requirements you'd encounter, and focuses on delivering a higher quality power supply that doesn't sacrifice on efficiency or stability. Noise is also a heavy point for the Straight Power 11, using a 135mm Silent Wings 3 fan that can spin as low as 200 RPM for quieter low load operation. Learn more at the link in the description below. And as a quick example uh, of what global illumination directly is doing to the room, we can show global illumination is on currently, and then global, I'm just going to call it GI, global illumination is really long. This is GI off. So you can see there's no light bouncing off from the floor onto the bottom of the object, which is why it's difficult to see. Yes, this is a bad example. We'll talk about this more later in the video. Yeah, this is it's why metallic objects are not good examples of global illumination. So a quick forenote for all of the other demonstrations we have coming up. We'll be showing those in videos after this one, like reflections, we'll be showing shadows, things like that. But in this one, it's our first demonstration. We'll show you a room that's commonly referred to as a Cornell box. It demonstrates global illumination. And uh, the, the kind of key point here is that GI can be faked. This is not unique. It's not new to Turing. This has, global illumination has been in games. It's just that Turing has the ability to execute GI with real-time ray tracing instead of fake methods. And we'll be showing you those. So this representation is actually a recreation of NVIDIA's original demo from the RTX launch. We're going to use it to demonstrate RTX on versus off. And if we look closely, you can see that global illumination is sort of emanating colored light off of the walls and onto nearby surfaces, including onto the floor from the metallic ball. The, the demo Andrew and I have talked about before is flawed in several ways. It's NVIDIA's uh, demo, but we're just recreating it to match them. So Andrew, what are some other ways we can tell this is global illumination? I guess you already mentioned the, the light reflecting off onto the objects. You can also see it reflecting onto the floors around them. Yeah, we should, we should mention this. So these lights on the walls, I think we agree that they're not really the best way to do this demo. Right. So the, the important part of a Cornell box is that there's one, or that all the lights in the room are just white colored. So all the color coming onto the objects is just bouncing off of the walls themselves, not directly from the light source. Right. And the reason we have these colored lights here is because we're just matching NVIDIA's demo. Uh, which we have a whole different video on why we disagreed with this technique to demonstrate it. We don't need to go through that all again today. You can check the previous video for that, but it's, it's still fine. We can still do the demo here. So global illumination to do one quick primer on this. Uh, I guess the main thing we're looking at here is the light from the ceiling, especially in your, your more traditional sample on the right side, is pr providing all the light to the room. It's hitting colorful objects like the walls, and then that light projects onto the surfaces of objects nearby. And it is not, um, for example, ambient occlusion. I think a lot of people saw Metro Exodus where a lot of the time the scenes are just darker. And that's from GI. It's, it's not like a difference in AO. Right. Yeah, that has nothing to do with ambient occlusion. Right. And so we have some AO in the corners of this room, like in the, where the wall, walls meet. Right. And you can change that separately in Unreal Engine if you wanted to. But that is not uh, GI. Is it actually, is there an advantage to using DXR if you really try? So if you're a developer and you genuinely try hard to make GI look good without needing RTX or DXR, 
you know, the question is, can you achieve a similar look with a similar amount of effort? And so we actually, showing this initial demo, we kind of bait and switched you guys. This is traditional global illumination. It is not ray trace global illumination. And our point is that you can sort of match DXRGI with standard game graphics techniques that sort of fake the lighting. There are a lot of shortcomings to this. We'll show you those as well. And this Cornell box is uh, the one on the left is a bit flawed, but we'll ignore that for now as well. So despite looking really convincing, there are still downsides. And we'll cut to a shot of the true DXR version if we haven't already versus our fake and editing. But let's just not label them for a second so that you can just kind of take it in and, and figure out for yourself which one you think is which. One of these uses DXR and ray tracing. The other one is our fake. So we'll put labels on those now. Post below if you guessed correctly. And so, Andrew, can you explain first? Let's let's walk through. We can walk through how you made the fake, or maybe, or do you want to cover first the shortcomings of the fake? Which do you think is more? I think the latter is more appropriate. The way to make this is pretty straightforward. It's like a few check boxes. You say, do you want global illumination? Yes. And then you say, how many light bounces do you want? And you say like three or four. I don't right. know. But then you also did some stuff like you you have versions of this where you've baked shadows into the floor, right? Yeah. And into the objects. And if you toggle your flashlight, you'll, I mean, they still behave like shadows, but, uh, but they're baked in. So if you have a, a non-static object, right. that's a flaw. I baked all of these as static objects. So the, the lighting on the ground is assuming that they're not going to move. But then after that, I told the engine they, they can move. And so you can see that uh, also, you can see that the global illumination is also baked into the ground. Right. And there are other ways to do this too. Like, uh, is this current example we're looking at, is this using the light mass option? Yeah, so that okay. will only mostly affect it when objects go, um, start to move like this. It shouldn't affect objects that are static anyway, but... And so, yeah, one of the... The bigger upsides, one of the, I guess, easiest ways to fake GI is if you do have a bunch of objects that won't move, like a bunch of furniture, for example, that the player can never interact with, non-destructible environment, then you can get, from what I've seen you do the last few days, you can get pretty damn close to DXR GI, if not more or less exact, except it's just, it's stuck to those static objects. Right, so nothing's calculated after runtime. It's like, it's basically like the engine is painting underneath what it the accurate lighting uh, physics calculation, and then just says like, okay, that's that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what it is. Uh, so then, are there ways? I I think you can still kind of get. I saw you do one demo where you had the shadow still following the marbles, I guess. Yeah. With uh, a non DXR version, but were there still downsides to that approach? An important thing to note is that all of these are actually Unreal Engine's new rectangular lights. And I think they calculate shadows a little bit differently because none of these do have shadows. But if you bring them over to the uh, the point light that we have, they do cast moving shadows. Right. So it might just be a limitation of that specific type of light. Sure. So uh, yeah, so, so clearly our fake is pretty good here. But if we switch over to a demo with DXR, we can show some of the advantages. And, and just to be clear here, the point of this video isn't to pick a side of DXR versus not. DXR does, I, I think it's been kind of unfairly beaten down by some of the community. And there are very fair weight reasons to, to uh, criticize DXR and RTX. But one of the oddest comments I've seen, and it's regular, unfortunately, is ray tracing is a scam, or ray tracing is a hoax, which is just sort of comical. Kind of clarify some stuff for the audience. Ray tracing has been a thing for decades at this point in, in terms of computer graphics. So ray tracing is a thing. Real-time ray tracing is kind of the, the new thing that they want to do. Ray tracing is used commonly in movies, like Pixar movies for sure. Right. Uh, we used it in our intro logo render. So the, the thing to be critical of with RTX and DXR is not that uh, ray tracing is a scam. It's that is this present implementation of the different technologies feasible uh, to render on the existing hardware in real time while still looking good, like at least as good as the fake graphics. So that's what we're really looking at. And in the DXR version that you've pulled up in the engine here, we can see some of the, the upsides and downsides. The immediate downside is performance. Everyone knows this side of the story. 
So performance objectively gets worse with DXR and RTX right now. We know that. And then another downside visually is I'm seeing a lot of noise. Right. So do we know what that's like? Do we know firmly the story behind this amount of noise? So in order to get a proper resolution for an image, like in order for enough bounces to hit a surface or a pixel, in order for, their t for, in order for the noise to go away, you need, it depends on the scene. But an outdoor scene, maybe like 500-ish samples per pixels. And if you're trying to do an indoor scene where there's light only coming in from a window and it has to bounce multiple services in right, order to light so up the So limited room. light. Right, yeah. Limited light and one source and many places for the light to rebounce off of surfaces. You probably need around like 1,000 to 2,000 samples for a clear resolution. And right now, this is only running at two, two samples per pixel for, I th right. well, I think the rectangular lights are set to six and the global illumination is set to two. I mean, two versus six. When you're talking a thousand, who cares? They're running a denoiser that helps resolve images a little bit faster, but you can tell it's not great still. Yeah, it has some interesting latent effects. Like, I mean, you can see it in the gun or if you shoot uh, you'll see following the ball, there's like ghost balls <laughs> following. The comments can have fun with that one. Uh, so upsides, though, of DXR, we've, we've seen clearly some of the downsides. Let's look at some of the upsides. We have, uh, give a balance here. You can see the shadows are now accurately following the objects. We do have global illumination in those shadows. We have global illumination in, in the Cornell box. Right. The interesting thing about DXR is that nothing has to be baked before runtime. Everything just uh, operates how the lights would expect to in uh, real life physics. Although I'm sure they're doing some kind of optimizations that are different from real life physics. Yeah, of course. But if it's close enough, then yeah. So we're we're calculating here uh, as opposed to having it pre-calculated, right? Which would be what baked lighting is. And uh, again, you don't have to necessarily bake it into static objects. I guess we have some examples where. You can fake GI with dynamic stuff as well. It's just there are still shortcomings with that. But with uh, with DXR, I mean, what's your kind of opinion of the accuracy of the GI with this versus your your baked version? Like, do you think the the pre baked lighting uh, do you think is uh, is significantly outdone by the real time ray traced? So are you asking and if in terms of quality, in terms of how how realistic it is? Are you saying that compared to the static objects? Yes, static objects. If we ignore the dynamism that we want with DXR. I would say it's pretty close, except it takes like five minutes to do it before you start the game. Right. Or it, it takes it five minutes to do it. When they build the game. While they're building it, yeah. Yeah, yeah which is an important point, because uh, if it's taking that amount of time to calculate it, then obviously that's not real time. So at one frame every five minutes, I don't think is an acceptable metric for anybody. Uh, except for Xbox players, but beyond that, I, the real time, or if we look at dynamism, you know, you look at a dynamic scene instead of a static scene. How do you feel then? Obviously, it starts losing some accuracy. So now we're loading in another demo, and this is a preview for some of the stuff we'll show you in videos coming up. This rotating logo, for example, has uh, ray trace reflections. Yes. In it, I believe, and th this is a whole different topic. We're not going to talk about it today, but. Uh, so just some tech demos we've built with all of these DXR technologies to show what NVIDIA is trying to do. And here's another, uh, I guess, Cornell box. Yes. And it's a bit different this time. So what's going on here? Basically, this, the same thing is going on, except you can see it uh, on objects that are moving on their own and see how it affects different sides of each object, things like that. Even that shadow on the ground. So we're still, DXR is on right now. Uh, so the shadow on the ground you can see is is you know green on the green side and it's a bit darker on the not green side. Yeah. The object rotates; it gets some light cast on it. That's the color uh, of the wall next to it. And um, yeah, I mean it's just we're just showing a dynamic object, which you couldn't achieve this in, in quite the same quality, I think, with your fake approach, right? Yeah, it depends. There's. You can set objects to be movable in global illumination, but it will do a better calculation if you set it to static. 
So here's our rasterized version. You want to talk through the differences of this one versus the other? Yeah, so it actually, it's a, I was pretty impressed when I saw the rasterized version of this. The weird thing only is that there's no shadows anymore in the movable objects. Once again, it might be because of that. This is also using a rectangular light. These two are rectangular lights. This might be a limitation of that. But you can see that it's still somewhat dynamic. The sides yeah, change. Yeah, it's pretty good. So we've still got some some GI in here. And yeah. uh, this can be done at a pretty high frame rate without DXR and RTX, but you do lose, like you said, the shadow quality, for example. Right. Actually, that has me curious. I'm just going to do this really quick. Yeah, I'm going to change out the rect light for a point light. So I made a little bit of a mistake. I didn't make this light bright enough. So it doesn't look exactly like the last scene. But you can see that there are moving shadows now, just because it's a point light. Right, so this is the shadow thing we were talking about was more a result of the specific type of light in, Un in Unreal Engine. But you can tell that since these are movable objects, Unreal did not bake the lighting information into the textures of the object. Right. Yeah, so how does, when you bake the lighting information into an object, it does it effectively like rebuild the texture and apply it to the, the UV map, or what is, what is it yeah. doing? Yeah, so there is a thing in each object called a uh, light map UVs, is what they're called. Generate light map UVs. And Unreal can either do that from your own UV maps, or it can make one for you. And then that's where it bakes the um, lighting detail information. Right. A UV map, uh, should we bother going into any detail on this? Let's, uh, let's just do a really short version. It's like UV maps are a 2D representation of a 3D object. So it's kind of like, think about how you would unwrap a face. I think that's OK, let's, go to, let's <laughs> yeah. switch it to a shirt. If you're trying to make a shirt as flat as possible, only one plane, then you'd have to cut both sides down the middle, which is how they sell them. But a face is way better. <laughs> they're, they're examples of uh, like faces on like 3D objects. Yeah, I have one of those of my face. Oh, Chris. It's a great example, though. We can show one from, uh, I'm sure we can find some online. But yeah, the, there's your primer view UV map, topic for a different, different day. But anyway, yeah, so changing the type of light did add some shadows in. But uh, the DXR version of, of GI still has some upsides. It has downsides too, of course, noise and performance. Point lights are kind of weird in general because they always produce, uh, well, that's not necessarily true. I was going to say they always come from a, an infinitely small point, which is unrealistic, but you can change the source radius. Okay. So you can change how large right. the light should be calculated from. So what about the, the light probes you were showing me? What, let's, let's demonstrate those. Each okay. of these little points says like, okay, from the top angle, I'm receiving this amount of white light. From the bottom angle, I'm receiving this amount of green, green. indirect lighting. So these, these all calculate indirect lighting in their little specific point in space. And then when objects get close to them, they can say, OK, I can sample lighting from a 360 direction onto this surface here. Right, and, then, and the object in this instance is that red ball. Yes. To be clear. So, so uh, I guess the, the probe is used uh, as, it relates to the, as it relates to the proximity of objects nearby. The probe can be used to calculate the correct type of or correct color of light being cast onto that object. Right, correct color and in, uh, intensity. Right, and this, so it. Is it correct to say then that this gives you more flexibility in having dynamic objects? Yes. Because now you can move the ball around the Cornell box, and as it moves around the box, you're still going to be able to sample. It's just it'll be from all these different uh, light probes. Yes. So you can see that this might be because it's a rectangular light uh, once again. There's yeah. no shadows at all. But the lighting is no longer baked into the ground, but... Yeah, so this is this is another, just to be clear, this is not DXR right now, right. which is pretty obvious if you've seen the noise in the other ones. But uh, So this is another fake. Light probes allow it to be uh, a bit more dynamic and still have accurate global illumination without needing ray tracing. And let's see if we can get some... Are we trying to get some shadows in here now? Yeah, just some quick... So then... Uh, in order to just kind of eliminate a variable here, we're going to 
are we getting rid of the rectangle lights or just overpowering them? <laughs> uh, we got rid. So these uh, these planes on the ceiling aren't are not th the lights. They're just for show, just to show where the lights were originating from. But they don't actually illuminate. Any, they actually cast shadows. Yeah. Right. So I think I need to. There's some checkbox or some shader setting someplace to accept lighting from emissive objects that is not turned on. But I don't, I don't know where that is. So just one more quick light build to get the, uh, see how it calculates the shadows and uh, global illumination for the movable objects and how it recalculates the indirect lighting for the light probes. We've changed the light types. Let's, let's kind of briefly, what are the downsides to the light probe approach uh, that we know of? Because clearly it, it seems like it can fake GI pretty well. So there's got to be a downside versus DXR, which is, we think, maybe performance to some extent. Right. But we're not really sure how much. Generally, you should always use light probes in your scene from what, unless you're going for a, a, a non-photorealistic approach. But if you want indirect lighting, then light probes are the way to go. OK. OK, so now we've changed, Andrew just changed the, the type of light. Uh, to what is it a point light now? Yes, these are still rect lights, but right, that's and that's still matching Nvidia's demonstration, which we'll talk about in a minute. So <laughs> what's going on now? Now it looks like there's some shadows as opposed to previously. So we have some some shadows now then, and and nothing baked into the floor, and right. nothing baked into the objects either. Yes, so this is a this is still a fake approach, not a bad one though. Um, let's just we mentioned earlier that this. On the left, this Cornell box is flawed. And uh, as we said earlier, this is just copying what NVIDIA made for their demonstration. We had a kind of a rant previously where I believe I said, um, uh, I said, I think it's a little misleading. And you said, it's very misleading. Yes. <laughs> so the, the demo NVIDIA showed, just to bring it back up, was one example was basically none of these traditional global illumination effects really applied, like or none of the fakes applied, I think. Right. And then they also introduced a whole bunch of weird things into the scene where, like, wasn't wasn't it the scene of one of them had, like, the glass marble and the reflective ball, and then the other one didn't have those things or something? Yeah, so this is actually a... This is an exact copy. Of yeah, things. this is their original one. It's up with the fake lighting. This is their what they changed it to. Right. So on this the right the... side, they say this is before this is DX. This is RTX off. Right. That's what they say. Yeah. Which leads you to think this is traditional lighting. Then they say this is RTX on. RTX does not change the material of the object. Right. And so that is extremely misleading. But and it's kind of sad because they don't need to be misleading to say like, hey, this technology has some promise. We've already demonstrated that. Right. They had another example with the, that uh, quadro card in the room. And that um, RTX off and on demonstration was actually pretty accurate. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. They, they didn't. That was like near the end of their presentation, though, also. Yeah, and I don't know that it was pushed public or not. But uh, yeah, so anyway, reasons that it's flawed, other than changing the material of the objects in the left-right comparison, is uh, also you're dealing with the colorful lights on the walls. And the whole point of the Cornell box is what is it? You have a single light in the top that's white? Yes. And it doesn't need to be a single light, but... But the, a white light, I guess. Right. And uh, so adding colorful lights, and if we look at the left scene, it, it kind of looks like there's GI in places that it's actually just there's a colored light. Right. So it's like, it's really just, it, it, it defeats the purpose of the demonstration. And also using a, a metallic object is flawed for this too, because... Uh, what we're seeing is reflections right. in it's, addition to GI elsewhere. It's very difficult to see GI in a metallic uh, object because it just bounces off. Well, I guess technically even a diffuse object will be also bouncing off the light, like this one over here. I right. guess it's technically a light bounce, even though you see it directly on the object. But for here, you'd see it. The bounce is so sharp that it's just reflecting the image of what it was Right. Reflecting because it's mostly in real life, GI and reflections are the same math. It's light bouncing off of an object, it just the surface changes how that light bounces off 
And you can also see it uh, in this metallic surface how little changes between the two. Yes, just to illustrate why this is a bad way to demonstrate GI. And you can also see why these colored lights are not a good example of global illumination because it is changing the color of the shadows, but not because of indirect lighting, but just because the direct lighting is a color. And here's the lack of global illumination with ray tracing. So it's not appearing in the mirror, but it does appear on the object. And this is a limitation, I guess. It might be an Unreal Engine thing. I'm pretty sure it's just a limitation of Unreal Engine right now. Oh, uh, we should also point out that we're using Unreal Engine 4.22 Preview 2. So this is not the final re release of 4.22. Right. So they might add more things. And they've already added lots of things since the first preview, like multiple reflections, right? things like that. So. Also, global illumination was not in the first preview also. Yeah. All right, so that's it for our GI demo. Hopefully, this gives you some more information to work with than just the, the Metro execution. There's a lot to the story here. And clearly, as we've demonstrated, you can fake GI pretty well. This is one of the biggest points we want to get across. Global illumination itself is not new. It is not new to RTX. It is not unique to RTX. You do not need RTX to do global illumination. In fact, a lot of games already have global illumination baked in. But uh, or faked in other ways. But um, RTX and DXR have some unique upsides that are worth considering here, and we've demonstrated those as well. So uh, just wanted to give you a look at that. We have demos and, and examples, a lot of technical explanation coming up of ray tracing of DXR RTX shadows. Uh, I believe we have we can do some path tracing versus ray tracing demonstrations, some roughness comparisons, things like that. So definitely subscribe if you're not. We have more of these coming up. And uh, let us know what you think below of, uh, of our game. Does this look like something you would want to play? Because, I mean, I, I think that IGN would give this at least a 7 out of 10, which on their scale is about a 2. So thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to support this type of work. And you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our shirts or mod mats or something like that. We'll see you all next time.